All right, let's cut for our Monday. I was sitting at home a week ago today, frustrated, because I could not come up with what to do my speech on. I kept going back and forth between things I learned in the military, trying to figure out what I could do, how I could do it, and if it would be entertaining to you guys. As I was doing this, I was setting up my hookah, getting ready for a really intense brain brainstorming session. <laughs> then it hit me. My topic was literally in my hands. The hookah is an intricate yet simple to use tobacco pipe originating from the Middle East that carries a long history and has recently been gaining, regaining popularity amongst college students. According to an article published April 2011 from ScienceDaily.com, a web-based survey concluded that 40% of college-age students have at least tried smoking from a hookah pipe. We can break down the setup into three simple steps. First, I'll show you how to prepare the coals. Second, I'll explain the importance behind properly packing your tobacco, known as shisha. And finally, I'll show you how to put it all together. To begin, we'll start with the step that takes the longest. Prepping coals is the easiest thing to do, but it's the lengthiest process. The two main types of coals you'll find are natural coals and Instalite coals. Natural coals are my favorite because they're cleaner, burn longer, and they don't give your shisha sort of a charcoal flavor. The other kind of coal is the Instalite or self-igniting coals that use a chemical-based accelerant to speed up the lighting process. They're going to be a lot faster, but they also have some downsides. You can prep your coals with just about any heat source, and you'll know they're done when they look bright red, sort of like charcoal from a grill. I like using a stovetop or a hot plate to heat my coals. It's safest and easiest, and I'd recommend it over using a lighter or a torch. Basically, you just set it on the stovetop, flip it with your tongs after about three minutes on each side, that's all it takes. The other thing you can use is a lighter or a torch, but I wouldn't recommend it because of the proximity of the flame to you and having to continuously watch it. Makes it a lot more dangerous and less efficient. As your coals are cooking, you can move on to the next step. The most important part of the hookah, the shisha. Like any other consumer product in America, there are hundreds of brands and flavors to choose from. Flavors come in a crazy variety with names like apple, blueberry, chocolate mint, to names like Purple Savior, Code Blue, and one called Queen of Sex. <laughs> Different brands also promise better, thicker, whiter, milkier smoke. I have two brands here, Starbuzz and Fumari, but I just find it easier to use something you like. My personal favorite is Starbuzz brand Blueberry. The way you pack your shisha is going to make or break your hookah experience. I had to learn this the hard way, and I always keep napkins nearby, because shisha can get very messy. You always want to take your shisha out of the packaging. It's going to be very juicy, I guess is the term I could use, because it's soaked in molasses and sometimes honey to increase the sweetness. You always want to take your bowl and sprinkle the shisha into it. Never pack it in. I had to learn that the hard way. The reason you sprinkle it in versus pack it in is because it restricts the airflow. The first time I ever packed a bowl of shisha, I packed it in so tight that I couldn't actually get any air suction, and when I tried to smoke it, nothing happened. <laughs> to avoid that embarrassment, like I said, sprinkle the shisha in. Once your shisha is packed and sprinkled in lightly, you want to take a single sheet of aluminum foil and cover the top of the, of the bowl. You want to secure this as tightly as possible. Next, I'm fortunate enough to have tongs that come with a little poker, but you can basically take anything, a ballpoint pen, a thumbtack, a safety pin, and you want to just poke as many holes as you can into the aluminum foil. I like to do this in a sort of circular pattern because I find it, it makes the air ventilation the most even. And I've even seen some people that sort of jimmy rig themselves essentially a board full of thumbtacks and just press it on at once. Once your holes are poked into your bowl, you're ready to go on to the next step. Always wipe your hands 
like I said, shisha can get really messy. As your coals are almost done, and your shisha is packed and ready to go, you can begin assembling all your pieces together. All hookahs are made up basically the same way. You want to take your stem and put it into the bowl, or I'm sorry, the base. The base should be filled with enough water to fit the down stem, the part that actually goes into the base, about half an inch. You want to simply secure that on there until it's nice and snug. Then you take your hose, which comes with a mouthpiece and an end piece, and take the end piece and fit it into the stem. Once your hardware is essentially ready to go, you can fit on the uh, prepared items, which include the bowl, fits right onto the top of the stem. You want to keep that snug. And then very carefully, with your tongs, you want to take the coals. Again, these coals are going to be red hot at this point, so you want to be very careful. And set it right on top of the foil. Now you're essentially ready to smoke. Today I showed you how to prepare your coals, explain the importance behind properly packing your shisha, and show you how to put it all together. Now as a bit of a disclaimer, hookah or any tobacco product does come with its set of health risks and I would never pressure someone into trying it. However, if this is something that you would consider trying for yourself, know you'd be joining a 500 year old tradition and indulging in a great way to socialize and an even better way to experience a new culture.